good said aramis taking a purse which bazin presented to him what is this wait your reverence there is a letter you know i have already told you that if you ever call me anything but chevalier i will break every bone in your body give me the letter how can you read asked athos it is as dark as a cold oven wait said bazin striking a flint and setting afire a twisted wax light with which he started the church candles thus illumined aramis read the following epistle my dear d'herblay i learned from d'artagnan who has embraced me on the part of the comte de la for in yourself that you are setting out on a journey which may perhaps last two or three months here are two hundred pistoles which you can dispose of as you wish and return to me when opportunity occurs do not fear that you put me to inconvenience if i want money i can send for some to any of my chateau at brechou alone i have twenty thousand francs in gold so if i do not send you more it is because i fear you would not accept a larger sum i address you because you know that although i esteem him from my heart i am a little awed by the comte de Laffer, but it is understood that what i offer you i offer him at the same time i am as i trust you do not doubt you are devoted du valen de brechou de pierfins well said aramis what do you say to that i say my dear d'herblay that it is almost sacrilege to distrust providence when one has such friends and therefore we will divide the pistoles from portos as we divided the lewis sent by d'artagnan the division being made by the light of bazin's taper the two friends continued their road and a quarter of an hour later they had joined de winter at the port st denis chapter x l i i i in which it is proved that first impulses are oftentimes the best the three gentlemen took the road to picardy a road so well known to them and which recalled to athos and aramis some of the most picturesque adventures of their youth if mousquetten were with us observed athos on reaching the spot where they had had a dispute with the paviers how he would tremble at passing this do you remember aramis that it was here he received that famous bullet wound by my faith twall be excusable in him to tremble replied aramis for even i feel a shudder at the recollection hold just above that tree is the little spot where i thought i was killed it was soon time for grimage to recall the past arriving before the inn at which his master and himself had made such an enormous repast he approached athos and said showing him the air-hole of the cellar sausages athos began to laugh for this juvenile escapade of his appeared to be as amusing as if some one had related it of another person at last after travelling two days and a night they arrived at boulogne toward the evening favoured by magnificent weather boulogne was a strong position then almost a deserted town built entirely on the heights what is now called the lower town did not then exist gentlemen said de winter on reaching the gate of the town let us do here as at paris let us separate to avoid suspicion i know an inn little frequented but of which the host is entirely devoted to me i will go there where i expect to find letters and you go to the first tavern in the town toolsby du grand henry for instance refresh yourselves and in two hours be upon the jetty our boat is waiting for us there matter being thus decided the two friends found about two hundred paces further the tavern indicated their horses were fed but not unsaddled the grooms supped for it was already late and their two masters impatient to return appointed a place of meeting with them on the jetty and desired them on no account to exchange a word with any one it is needless to say that this caution concerned blaisois alone long enough since it had been a useless one to gream it athos and aramis walked down toward the port from their dress covered with dust and from a certain easy manner by means of which a man accustomed to travel is always recognizable 
The two friends excited the attention of a few promenaders. There was more especially one upon whom their arrival had produced a decided impression. This man, whom they had noticed from the first for the same reason they had themselves been remarked by others, was walking in a listless way up and down the jetty. From the moment he perceived them, he did not cease to look at them, and seemed to burn with the wish to speak to them. On reaching the jetty, Athos and Aramis stopped to look at a little boat made fast to a pile and ready rigged as if waiting to start. That is doubtless our boat, said Athos. Yes, replied Aramis, and the sloop out there making ready to sail must be that which is to take us to our destination now, continued he. If only de winter does not keep us waiting, it is not at all amusing here.